Today we are back down here at Lane, Oklahoma at the West Watkins Research and Extension Center. And joining us today is Dr. Jim Schreffler, who we are always excited to have on the show because you are just so knowledgeable about vegetables. <laughs> uh, you serve as the Southeast Horticulture Specialist down here for Extension and uh, we appreciate what you provide for us on the show. So I know you've been doing a lot of research with squash in particular. Tell us where you're at with that research. Okay. Well, let me just quickly say, explain what this is all about. You know, over the years back when I started talking to farmers and, and home gardeners and, and farmers market growers, it seems like their main problem with squash and other cucurbits, pumpkins, was squash bugs. Uh -huh. And they just didn't, the insecticides weren't working and this and that, and they tried all kinds of home remedies. And I bet our, uh, a lot of our viewers so, right now are <laughs> yeah, dealing so, with that problem. And one thing, one thing I saw that one, there was one thing that, was recommended in some cases. They didn't give a lot of detail, but you could cover your squash plants with a netting of some sort to keep the insect pests off. Right, so, so where, yeah, because so, this is a multi-year um, and multi-area, yeah. you're not just doing it here at Lane, you've been doing it elsewhere over the years. Right, right, we've worked with, uh, with people in Stillwater, with people at Langston University, uh, over several years doing some trials, looking at it, uh, some different ideas uh, on, on how this might be done. And uh, I'm not going to explain all the background on that, but af after several years of work, a couple uh, there are a couple things that that uh, that came up as as, as possible uh, uh, materials to use. Number one, that's one question. You know, what kind of material to use? Mm -hmm. Does it make a difference? And number two, when you if you're going to cover the squash, how do you decide when to remove those covers to allow the pollinators in? So, okay. so basically, what we have here is a trial where we're comparing two different types of, of row cover materials. One is a, uh, a horticulture fabric, uh, what we see over here. It's a spun material. Yes, yeah. it's a spun material. Uh, and then this one is actually a, a, a fine netting and the holes are small enough that squash bugs cannot get through them. Okay. Other, other insects could, but squash bugs can't. Okay. So okay. Moisture can get through these. Again, they're gonna block block the rain, but moisture can get through them so they can breathe. Okay. Uh, but so that, and that of course would be very important. Okay. So, so what are you uh, finding so, between the two of those? Well, Anything? we're, again, the reason uh, this is kind of a, 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 a wrap up study to compare some things we saw. And both these materials look good. In some of the trials, we did see there was more powdery mildew on the squash that was under the, the cloth pipe material. Okay. So that's one of the reasons to compare these two in this trial. Okay. So. And, and also yeah. the timing of when to remove these covers. What are you finding exactly, with that? Exactly. Yes. We uh, so there's so one factor here is to keep the uh, the insect pests from getting to the squash. And what we're doing here, we're comparing two different removal timings. One is two weeks after the uh, after about half of the plants have the first female flower. Okay. And that's the little flower that has a little fruit at the bottom. Mm -hmm. uh, so when you start to see those, that's when you remove your cover. And then the second treatment is to remove, uh, to wait another week, which is three weeks after uh, first, fl first female flowers, okay. and then remove the cover. So that would give you a chance if you wanted to extend your, your harvest period. And when you extend it, what that means is you're gonna keep the insect pests off those plants for a little bit longer period, right. and those plants will stay healthy and productive for a little bit longer. But there is that possibility if you uncover, it, those squash bugs will quickly move over. Oh yes, so, once once yeah. you remove those covers, they'll, the squash bugs will show up pretty quickly. So any a recommendations, two weeks to three weeks? Is that the... Well, uh, both work, uh -huh. both will work. And, and so we'll, the results of this trial, once we get the data, we'll will help us better answer that. But we, in the previous trials, we saw that either with a two week or three week removal, uh, that there was no, we've had equivalent yields. We didn't have a, a real reduction. We looked at longer, uh, longer cover periods up to four weeks and five weeks, and the yields dropped off greatly when we did that. Okay, so those so don't that's work. Too long. But, yeah. So Dr. Schreffler, is there only one variety of squash that you've used here, or multiple varieties in yes, this trial? Yes, in these trials we've used a single variety, and the variety is called Lioness, and it's we find it to be a pretty productive uh, yellow summer squash. Uh, good for it would be good for farmers market and even for commercial producers. Okay. One of the reasons we chose it is because it has a good what we call a, a virus disease package, it's supposed to be resistant to a lot of the viruses. And are you uh, finding that that's true? Well, I mean, I think it is <clears throat> because we haven't in the other trials, haven't found a lot of virus problems, but we did have one start to show up here in this trial. And, and you can see right here, these, these leaves that are, tend to be a little more strappy mm -hmm. uh, and pointy kind of thing. They're, they apparently, again, I need to send some to the disease lab for them to verify that, but they appear, appear to have some virus infection. 
and as that would be as compared to this plant right here that has doesn't have too many of the same symptoms. And you see the difference in the shape of these leaves. Yeah, much broader. Yes. And... Uh -huh. no. Now, as long as it may not be, we don't. It hasn't affected any of the fruit. Uh, many times, a virus infection will cause the fruit to be discolored, and uh, they don't they misshapen and all that. We haven't seen that. So, if that's the case, it's really not a. a not of any great concern but all right excellent so, so, thank you so. for sharing this information with us Dr. my pleasure mm -hmm. we hope you enjoyed this video it's part of our oklahoma gardening youtube channel you can also find even more videos on our ok gardening classics youtube channel and join us on social media for great gardening tips photos and discussion